All right, in this video, let's have a go at this AQA A-level mathematics question from 2017. So we have three planes denoted by these three linear equations. I'll label them as equation 1, equation 2, and equation 3. Equation 3 has constants A and B, and the planes do not meet at a unique point. So what that means is there's no unique solution. Or there could be an infinite number of solutions. Or there could be no solutions. And these will be the conditions we'll use to solve parts A and B. So for part A, we want to find the value of A. And let's go ahead and do that. Now there are several ways you can do this problem. The way that I'm going to do it makes most sense to me is to treat these as a system of equations and use an augmented matrix to find a solution. So we'll put all the coefficients and the numbers in an augmented matrix. The first row is going to be 5, 2, 11, and 45. The second row will be 2, negative 1, 5, and 15. The third row will be negative 3, 3, A, and B. So what I want to do now is to begin to solve for these set of equations by doing some row operations to get this matrix in what we call the row echelon form. Now you might be able to do this more efficiently, but I'm just going to go ahead and divide each of these rows by their first coefficient. So I'll have row 1 divided by 5, row 2 divided by 2, and row 3 divided by negative 3. And that gives me 1... 2 fifths, 11 fifths, and 45 divided by 5 is 9. For the second row, we'll have 1, negative a half, 5 on 2, and 15 on 2. So unfortunately, the numbers aren't looking too pretty. Now for the third row, we have 1, negative 1, negative a on 3, and negative b on 3. So let's now do some row subtraction. I'm going to subtract row 2 from row 1. Row 1 stays the same. Row 2 becomes 0. 2 fifths minus negative a half becomes 9 tenths. 11 fifths minus, let's have a little working section here. So 11 fifths minus 5 halves equals 22 minus 25 over 10, and that gives me negative 3 tenths. So negative 3 tenths, 9 minus 15 on 2 is equal to 18 minus 15 on 2, which is 3 on 2. And for the third row, we will subtract row 3 from row 1. So the first term goes to 0, 2 fifths minus negative 1 is 2 fifths plus 1, which is 7 fifths. 11 fifths minus negative a on 3 is plus a on 3, and that will give me 33 plus 5a over 15. 33 plus 5a over 15. Apologies for the small writing. Finally, 9 minus negative b on 3 is 9 plus b on 3. And that results in 27 plus b all over 3. So 27 plus b over 3. Now repeating the first step, I'm going to divide row 2 by 9 tenths and row 3 by 7 fifths. Copy the first row. So the second row reduces to 0, 1, negative 3 tenths divided by 9 on tenth is effectively multiplied by 10 over 9, and that gives negative 1 third. Then 3 on 2 also multiplied by 10 over 9. 2 cancels with a 10, we have 5. 3 cancels with a 9, and we have 3 here. 
So that is 5 on 3, 5 over 3. Row number 3 reduces to 0, 1. Now 33 plus 5a on 15 by 5 over 7. Cancel down the 15 and the 5. So that reduces to 33 plus 5a on 21. We'll write that down, 33 plus 5a over 21. Finally, 27 plus b over 3. Multiply that by 5 over 7. And there really isn't much we can do to simplify, so I'm just going to write that as 5 outside of 27 plus b over 21. Now there is no unique solution to this set of equations. I'm just going to put a divider down here. So to satisfy that, remember I said in the beginning we need to satisfy the conditions that there are an infinite number of solutions, or there are no solutions. So to satisfy these conditions, we need the third row elements on the left side of the divider to be 0, 0 and 0. And to achieve that all I have to do is to make sure that this number here minus this expression here is equal to 0. So let's do that. So minus 1 third minus 33 plus 5a all over 21. We set that equal to 0 and we solve for a. It's probably easiest just to get a common denominator. So the first term becomes negative 7 minus outside of 33 plus 5a. In fact, let's expand the minus into the parentheses now. So we have minus 33 minus 5a all over 21 equals 0. I can shift 21 upstairs, multiplying both sides by 21, and that gets rid of the 21 on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, of course, 21 times 0 is 0. Minus 7 minus 33 is minus 40. So rearranging, we have 5a equals minus 40, and that means a is equal to negative 8. And we'll just box this one off in red. So the value of a for there to be no unique solutions has to be negative 8. Okay, let's now move on to part b. I'll just copy the matrix that we have so far. And for the third row, 0, 1, let's substitute in negative 8. So we'll have negative 1 third here as well. And remaining we have 5 outside of 27 plus b, all over 21. Our final row subtraction is subtracting row 3 from number 2. So row 2 minus row 3. Alright, so finally row 3 becomes 0, 0, 0, and the last term is 5 thirds minus 5 outside of 27 plus b all over 21. And that reduces to, if we use a common denominator, we have over 21, and we have 35 minus, let's take the 5 in, so it's 5 times 27, which is 135, minus 5b. And this further reduces to minus 100 minus 5b divided by 21. So let's put that result in in our matrix. Alright, so let's have a look at what question B asks us again. Question B asks, there are two possible geometric configurations for the planes. Identify each configuration and find the corresponding values of B. Okay, so this ties back into the conditions we had in the beginning, where we have an infinite number of solutions and no solutions. Okay, so what type of planar configuration do we have where we have an infinite number of solutions? Well, if I draw out a set of three planes, let's call this plane 1, pi 1.
Let's call this plane pi 2 and it intersects plane pi 1 at this line here. Finally, let's draw a third plane. Let's call this pi 3. And pi 3 intersects both plane 1 and plane 2 at the same line. Okay, so this is the only planar configuration where we will have an infinite number of solutions because we have a straight line here where all the planes intersect. And of course, a straight line is made up of an infinite number of points. So to satisfy the infinite solutions condition, this term here has to be equal to zero. And that makes sense because if we write row three out where we have zero x plus zero y, plus 0z equaling 0, then it doesn't matter what x, y, or z are equal to. They can be arbitrary numbers, and we'll still have this equation hold true. Or the other way to think of it is 0 outside of x plus y plus z equals 0, and we have then x plus y plus z equals 0 divided by 0, which of course we can't do, but but this implies that we have an infinite number of solutions. So let's solve negative b, sorry, negative 100 minus 5b over 21 is equal to 0. The 21 we can get rid of because multiplying both sides by 21, 21 times 0 equals 0. So that leaves us with 5b equals 100, negative 100, sorry, and results in b equals negative 20. So when b equals 20, we have three planes that intersect at a common line, and that's an infinite number of solutions. Now the other possibility is we have no solutions, and the scenarios where we have no solutions are we have three parallel planes where the normals are all equal to each other, the normal vectors are all equal to each other. Well, they're either equal to each other or multiples of each other. Another possibility is where we have two parallel planes the cyan and the orange plane, and the purple plane, the magenta plane, intersects both of them. Okay, so it intersects both of them, forming parallel lines. And the final possibility is So we have this pair intersecting here, and the final plane Okay, so the three planes intersect at three different parallel lines. So what no solutions means, there is no point on any one plane that can be found on all of them. So you might think, well, there's, if I pick a point on the line here, so yes, that might suit the cyan plane and the magenta plane, but that point is not anywhere to be found on the orange plane. Okay, so let's label these scenarios as A, B, C. Okay, so for the no solution scenario, this term here needs to be any non-zero number, and we've figured that when b equals 20, this is a zero. So for any other value of b, we have the scenario where 0x plus 0y plus 0z is equal to some number. Let's call it q. Well, that doesn't make sense because 
the left hand side of the equation is equal to 0 and we're saying 0 is equal to Q which is a impossible result it's a conundrum if you like unless Q itself is equal to 0 uh, but we already discussed that because B has to equal negative 20 so Q is a non-zero number so we simply leave B not equal to 20 for the possibilities of A, B or C but what scenario is it? We can determine that by looking at the normals for each of the planes. So let me write down all of the equations again. We have 5x plus 2y plus 11z equals 45 minus y plus 5z equals 15 negative 3x plus 3y plus az equals b and we determined that a was equal to negative 8 so the normal so the normal vector to all of these planes we can just get from grabbing the coefficients so for plane 1 n1 is equal to 5 comma 2 comma 11 n2 is equal to 2 comma negative 1 comma 5 n3 is equal to 3 comma 3 sorry negative 3 3 and negative 8 so for this last part we can really just reason it because uh, all of these normals to me appear to be unique it doesn't appear that any one of these normals is a scalar multiple of another which means they're all pointing in different directions and that makes sense for when b equals negative 20 when we have this scenario here and we get infinite many solutions when we change the value of b all we're doing is offsetting one of these planes so we're taking it from the common intersection and just offsetting a bit to form the two other parallel lines so when b is not equal to 20 we're simply moving this one along the direction of its normal to form the other two parallel intersection lines so the only possible other configuration is C so when B is not equal to 20 we get configuration C alright so that'll do it for this video thank you for watching if you found it helpful please give me a like share it with your study mates and subscribe to my channel for more videos that'll help you with your math studies feel free to ask me any question in the comments below Best of luck with your studies and I'll see you on the next video.